welcome to the course Excelling with Mathematical Modeling. Today we will be discussing about the models which represent tumor growth. So let us see what is a tumor. So basically a tumor is a mass or group of abnormal cells that forms in the body and that takes place because of some problem with the DNA structure whose reason actually is not known. So as you can see the cells in the video they are growing so fast so that is what the tumor is and they try to connect with the blood vessels. So either they generate it or they try to connect it with the blood vessels through which they send the malignant tumor cell and which affects the other parts of the body. So that is how your tumor works. However, not all the tumors are malignant that is cancerous. Some of them are benign and the word is benign and not cancerous. So scientists have used this mathematical modeling to assess the growth of the tumor and we have many mathematical functions that gives somewhat good results and they can represent the growth of a tumor. So to start with we have this linear tumor growth model. So the first equation here it says dt dt equal to k where your capital T is the tumor and this is the time. So rate of change of time is a constant and we say it is a linear tumor growth. Obviously they are quite easy to solve and if you just want to solve it will be some t equal to k times t plus some constant. And since this is a linear equation the tumor growth is called a linear as you can see it is a straight line and hence the graph which you get is also a straight line. So the tumor grows like this. Now sometimes it happens that uh, the cells they also kills themselves which is called the natural decay of the cells or the natural death of the cells. In that particular case you have the growth constant and this is the natural decay or death of the cell and hence we get something like this. In that particular case you have the curve like this and if you want to generate this curve with the help of Microsoft Excel for this case the value of this k is equal to 2. For this case the value of k is again 2 but d is equal to 0 0.01. So if you plug these values in this difference equation, differential equation and solve it, uh, you will going to get this kind of curves. The question is then why, why we are having so many differential equations to represent the tumor growth that is because the tumor growth is varies from person to person and there are so many kinds of tumor and it has been noticed that say in case of brain tumor this particular kind of function matches and in case of say uh, tumor in the lungs this particular kind of function matches the data and hence we have several uh, kinds of growth uh, as far as this tumor growth is concerned. So our second kind will be the exponential tumor growth and the exponential tumor growth is dt dt is equal to kt and that is because if you solve this dt by t equal to k dt if I integrate that is ln t is equal to kt plus some constant and you can see that t can be expressed as exponential of kt plus constant. So that is why it is called the exponential tumor growth model and with the same logic I say that there is some natural death of uh, tumor cells and hence this minus dt comes here but again I can just take k minus d times t replace this by certain constant and you get the solution same as like this. 
So, this is the two graphs that you will get for tumor growth model and in this particular case, we take the value of k to be 0 0.1 and d as 0 0.01. This particular thing also known as shrinkage. But this easy way to remember that this is this caused by the natural death of the tumor cells. And if you notice and compare both the graphs, you will see that here the growth is a bit sharp, whereas here it is a bit flat and then going again up. Both are exponential, but due to this component, the growth of the tumor cell is somewhat a bit less because given a negative sign, whereas this grows totally exponentially without any shrinkage or very uh, natural death of the cell. The next one is the logistic and Gumpergian tumor growth model. We have done the logistic and Gumpergian growth. So, once again, if we recall those, the rate of change of tumor is equal to some k t into 1 minus t by t max where this k is called intrinsic growth rate and this t max is called the carrying capacity. So, the carrying capacity is the maximum resources that the environment can sustain. So, in this particular case, the tumor gets its resources from the body. So, the maximum uh, tumor cell that your body can sustain and this k is the growth rate. If you plot them with the values k equal to 0 0.1 and d equal to 0 0.01 and your t max is equal to 120, you will be able to generate this figure. So, this is your logistic growth. In the Gumpergian growth, you have the equation of the form, the rate of change of tumor is equal to k times t into log of t max by t. So, in this k is again the intrinsic growth rate and this T max is the carrying capacity which we have explained before. With the same numerical values, you will be able to plot a graph like this. Now, again the question is where you will use the logistic growth and where you will use the Gomperge growth. So, in tumor models, you get the data. The data is that with respect to time, how the tumor is growing directly from the patients. You can, we will be able to measure that. And once you measure that, you are going to plot those data and then try to fit one of these functions in that particular data. And the function which matches most uh, with the data is the function that we take to represent that particular kind of tumor. So, that is why we are learning so many forms of uh, tumor growths. Uh, so, that for a particular tumor, we just able to see that which particular functions actually fits the data. Obviously, you can do the equilibrium points and stability analysis of this all, all these models, which I can I just skip them for you as we have done lots on this single differential equations. So, here only we discuss about the different growth models of tumor. So, the next one is the combined exponential and linear tumor growth model. So, here it is the rate of change is given by some lambda 0 t divided by 1 by lambda 0 by lambda 1 t to the power 20, this whole to the power 1 by 20. So, obvious question is what is your lambda 0, what is your lambda 1. So, this lambda 0 is the rate that represents this exponential growth and lambda 1 is the rate that 
gives the linear growth. Now the question is how this 20 suddenly pop up in this particular function. Well, uh, it did not start with 20, it can start with some n, but then scientists have taken various values of n and ultimately zeroed it down to 20 because they saw that the kind of graph they are getting, it matches a particular kind of data and 20 gives a, uh, is a very good match for those kinds of data. So that is why this particular function has been discovered and this proved to be a quite a good fit for some kind of tumor growth model. There is another model which is called Bertelangfi model. In this particular model, the volume of the tumor is measured and that follows this particular equation v to the power 2 third minus b v. So, a is again the intrinsic growth rate and b is called the rate of anti angiogenic process. Now, what is angiogenic process? So, what happens is as you have shown, as you have seen in the video that this aim of this tumor to connect them with the blood vessels, either they grow of their own which is called the angiogenesis or they try to, uh, the cells try to go and connect with the blood vessels of the body so that the, they can circulate all the malignant tumor cells throughout the body and that is how a person gets infected very uh, fast. So, antigenic process means that there will be some drugs which will uh, stop the growth of this blood vessels. So, this particular B is take care of that, it kills or it uh, does not allow the tumor to grow by its anti-angiogenic property. So, this is one kind of uh, tumor growth model and Bertelangfi model. Now, let us take uh, what happens with treatment. So, here you see that it is growing exponentially and we have minus some k 1 t. So, due to drug effect, whatever it is, it is killing the tumor at the rate k 1. So, in this particular case and the one we have done where I have shown the model is something like k t minus some d t, this was the natural death. But here due to some drug, this particular tumor is getting eradicated or getting killed. This is exponential. And so, your curve, it starts with some initial value of the tumor it is growing with due to this term, but the drug is killing the tumor cells and hence it is going down and ultimately coming back to coming go down to 0. Now, this is an exposure dependent treatment effect. Now, what does it mean? That again it is doing a exponential growth and this exposure is due to drugs. So, what does this exposure means is that there is a time, a time interval or the time span during which your drug is going to work and various doses of drugs are going to be applied inside uh, the body of the person suffering from this tumor. So, this exposure is due to the drugs at which helps in killing the tumor cells at a rate k 1. So, that is why minus k 1 times some exposure which is going to be a function, which can be a function of time. And generally people use what is called Hill's function. I am not going into that, it is a very complicated function not needed for this uh, particular uh, course, this kind of research level thing. 
But anyway, the uh, idea is that you can use a functional form of uh, time to ensure that the drugs are applied inside the body and uh, the people get cured. So, uh, this kind of model is also applicable. Special form of exposure is that okay, you have a function, then you multiply it again with respect to some exponential factor of time that with time the effect of drug slowly goes off. So, here it is an exposure dependent treatment, but with resistance. So, what happens is that there is a person suffering from tumor, he is having an exponential growth of tumor and then the drug is given, but then uh, with time that the effect or efficacy of the drugs that goes out and due to which you see that the okay that there is a tumor which is going down, but the moment the effect of the drugs goes up, the tumor also relapse and this is very, very you know uh, known case scenario which happens in many patients. So, with that we come across a lot of models which gives you an idea of uh, the growth of the tumor cells and the corresponding effect of drugs on the tumor cells. Before going to the numerical solution, we just check the equilibrium points and the stability of two such growth models. You have to do with all the models, I just take the example of two, two of them. So, to start with, we take the logistic growth. where we have denoted the equation as dt dt, where capital T is the tumor, k is the intrinsic growth rate and T max is the carry capacity. So, to find the equilibrium point, we put this equal to 0 and we get k t 1 minus t by t max equal to 0. And if we solve this, I will get t equal to 0 and t equal to t max. Now, to find the stability, you take some f t is equal to k t 1 minus t by t max. I find what is f dash t which will be k minus 2 k t divided by t max. Now, at t equal to 0, f dash 0 is equal to k, because this goes to 0, which is positive, which implies the system is unstable. about the equilibrium point t equal to 0. And if you find f dash t max, so this will be k minus k t max divided by t max. So, this cancels and this is k minus 2k which is minus k and which is less than 0 because k is positive. So, this implies that t equal to t max is asymptotically stable about equilibrium point. T equal to T max. So, the system is stable, asymptotically stable about the equilibrium point T equal to T max. So, this is the equilibrium point and the stability analysis for the logistic growth. Let us take one more where we have taken Gumperge and growth. So, there 
the equation with which we represent the growth is kt log of t max divided by t and if you want to find the equilibrium point I have to put this equal to 0 and this will give me t equal to 0 and ln t max by t equal to 0 and the base of this ln is e so t by t max sorry t max by t is equal to e to the power 0 which is 1 and this gives t equal to t max. Now I can write this dt dt as kt ln t max minus ln t and let us take that to be some gt. So your g dash t will be given as k times ln t max by t plus k t into minus 1 by t this t cancels so k ln t max by t minus k. So if you want to check what is g dash 0 you will see that your ln t max by t is undefined and this implies that here t equal to 0 is a singular point and we cannot conduct the stability analysis for this point t equal to 0. So we stick to only t equal to t max and you see that g dash t is equal to k ln t max divided by t max minus k this is log 1 which is 0 and you are left with minus k which is less than 0 because k is positive and hence here also the system is asymptotically stable about the equilibrium point t equal to t max. Now let us see how you will generate the numerical solutions with Microsoft Excel. So I already have filled it up because there are so many equations and it will be so time consuming. So the first is the linear one, this two, then we have the exponential one, this and this, then we have the logistic one and the Gumpertian one. I have also this equation which depends on volume. So basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and this 7. So the one which I left is this one which I will just do it now. So this is, so we use the Euler's method which is this one and this is equal to T0 which is this value plus H which I have taken to be 1 and it is a constant value. multiplied by this particular function lambda 0 which is 0 0.1 multiplied by t0 which is this value and this whole thing has to be divided by 1 plus again a bracket open so lambda 0 this one divided by lambda 1 
which is this one. Again, this is a constant lambda 0 divided by lambda 1. This goes in a bracket uh, multiplied by t. which is t0 and then whole thing goes to the power 20. twenty, And then this whole thing goes towards 1 by 20. So from 1 again till this one to the power 1 by 20. Okay, let's see. So, we get here 5.5 and then we drag this till say 50 values and I get this values. Now what we do is we plot all of them in the same graph. So all the 50 values I go to insert, I go to this and I plot this. So now the question is what we get with this. So you can solve them individually and you can get the individual work graph. But what I want here is that I want to compare this uh, with various models. So the idea is that there are so many functions and so many dynamics of the functions. Now, which one to follow? So, what the scientists do is that they get data for a particular kind of uh, tumor. So, whether it can be a tumor of the brain or whether it can be the tumor of the lungs or whether it can be the tumor in the pancreas. So, all these sort of data is once they plot it, they look for a function that will match those data. And so we have so many kinds of function which the researchers have seen that they give a match to these particular tumor uh, growth data. And that is why we are learning here so many uh, functional mathematical form. So it depends that what kind of data you get and then you try all these equations, all these kinds of growth to match that particular kind of data and see that which particular function match that particular tumor growth. So with that we come to the end of this particular lecture where we have discussed various forms of tumor growth. In the next lecture we will be talking about some more interesting models. Till then, bye bye.